There is this one interesting piece in chess called Knight. Knight is a horse head piece that has a really nice moveset, which makes it very unique and interesting to mathematicians. It can move two squares in one direction and one square in a perpendicular direction, or in other words, it makes an L-shaped move. Therefore, if the knight is here, it can move to these eight squares. There are lots of puzzles and riddles involving knight on a board, for example the knight's tour puzzle, which I'll talk about later. Recently I came upon this very special problem and it goes like this. We are given an infinite board and a knight on one of its squares. Can this knight reach every other square of this board? This problem is called Knight's Infinite Odyssey and today we're going to solve it. But here's a small disclaimer. The purpose of this video is not just to solve this problem because mathematicians don't work like that. Solution ideas don't simply flow into brains spontaneously. The process is usually a big beautiful mess, which then leads to something more than just solving the problem. It leads to understanding it. In this video I would like to show you a marvelous approach starting from trying smaller cases through improving our own results, ending on solving a more general problem through an analogy and some number theory. When I first saw this problem I honestly had no idea how to solve it, but the concept of a knight visiting every square was kinda of familiar to me. I remembered that I was given a very similar problem in elementary school. Similar, but only to some extent, because the puzzle indeed asked to find a path for a knight that visits every square, but on a much smaller than infinite board, a 5x5 one. This puzzle was given to me during an additional chess class by my maths teacher, and I remember it as one of the first riddles that really got me into the puzzle solving and mathematics in general. At first, it was pretty hard for me and my only method was trial and error, but eventually I got it. I got a correct solution. This is how it looked like. No, I'm kidding. I don't remember what my solution was because I solved it like 12 years ago. But the one I've just showed you is indeed a path that visits every square of the 5x5 board exactly once. In particular, such path is called Night Store and this riddle is one of the most famous chess math problems of all time. This memory led me towards the first idea for solving the Knight's infinite odyssey problem. I thought to myself, well, since we can find the Night Store on a 5x5 board, Maybe we could divide our infinite board into squares with side length 5 and then consider all of these regions separately. Then the knight would indeed visit every square of our infinite board and we would be done. It's a good idea, but we need to remember that our knight starts in one specific square of our board, so in particular it starts in one specific 5x5 region, which we'll call the center one. Therefore, we need to somehow connect all of these regions with one path, which probably is the hardest part of this proof. But before we could even think about it, we need to create a path that connects two regions, in particular adjacent ones, which are the ones that share an edge. In order to do that, we must find two night stores one for each adjacent region, such that the ending position of the first one and the starting position of the second one can be connected by a knight move. Now we need to start being creative and do some choices. In which square should knight stores start? And where we want them to end? Since we eventually want to connect all regions with one path, these starting and ending points should be persistent throughout every each of them. But don't worry, we thankfully don't need to think too much about it, because we made good decisions at the very beginning of our solution. I'm talking about my 5x5 night store. Let's look at it once again. As you can see, the path started in the bottom left corner 
and ended in a square that can reach corners of two other 5x5 regions, the left one and the upper one. We could also create another night store by reflecting the one we already have, so that the ending square can reach corners of right region and the bottom region. Therefore, starting in the bottom left corner, we can reach a corner of any other adjacent region. The problem is that the corner we can reach is not necessarily the bottom left one. For example, when we want to go from this region to the left one, we reach the upper right corner, and that's a case that we haven't considered yet. But there is a simple way out of this situation. Our original night store and the reflected one can be also rotated to create another suitable paths. And after the rotation, the starting square moves to another corner. Continuing our example, we ended in the upper right corner, so we can rotate our night stores by 180 degrees to create paths that start in that square and can further reach corners of adjacent 5x5 regions. Okay. We have just proved that any two adjacent 5x5 regions can be connected by a path consisting of two night stores. The only thing left is to construct a sequence of 5x5 regions that starts in the center region and covers every region on our infinite board. There are many options, but the one I went for is this spiral one, because creating such sequence on a plane reminded me of the Ulam spiral, or at least the first step in its construction. Now let's finally see how our path looks like. To sum up, every 5x5 region is visited and on each of them night store is executed. Therefore, our knight can reach every square on our infinite board and the knight's infinite odyssey is solved. Thank you all for watching and see you next time. No, wait! I told you I'll do a lot more in this video and I'm going to keep the promise. Especially because our solution is far from perfect. I see two major flaws in it. First one is that we actually solved a different problem. See, the Knight's Infinite Odyssey asked us if all squares on our board can be reached and we indeed proved it, but we also showed that knight can reach every square on the board through exactly one path. It's a much stronger result and we actually don't need it. In fact, in the knight's infinite odyssey problem, we just need to show that every square can be reached, but not necessarily through one path. Second flaw I see in the first solution is that the path we construct is not optimized at all. For example, if we want our knight to get to this square, through the path we constructed, it needs to cover a lot of ground before it can actually reach it. So don't get me wrong, we indeed solved the riddle, but I think we can do a lot better. So here we are, once again with no clue how to solve the Knight's Infinite Odyssey problem. We need to start from scratch, right? No, not at all. This situation is very different than the one before we came up with the first idea, because now we are more experienced with the problem and we can use what we have already found. See, in our first solution we used the idea of dividing the infinite board into 5x5 five five regions and creating a sequence that goes through all of them. When we look at the sequence itself, we can notice that we just move one region at a time in some direction. In our case, the spiral sequence case, we are moving one region right, then one region up, one region left, one region left, one region down, and so on. Now, here's the idea. If we could mimic such moves but with one by one regions, in other words just single squares, then we wouldn't need to worry about night stores our knight would create the spiral sequence himself. 
and that's actually not that hard to achieve, because these four simple moves create a right move, and by applying symmetries we can also get up move, left move, and down move. Since our knight can just move one square at a time in any direction, it can also create the spiral sequence and therefore reach every square on the infinite board. Or even better, he doesn't even need to make the spiral. If we would assume that our knight is initially at the 0, 0 square, then going to the x, y one, where x and y are positive, would just require making right move x times and up move y times. And for other cases for x and y, he would behave analogously. Hence, once again we solve the knight's infinite odyssey problem, but we are not done yet. There is one more thing to do and it is... Wait, how is it called? Ah, yes, generalization. This is what mathematicians like the most and what essentially keeps the math growing. Personally, I really like to generalize math problems too, and this is exactly what happened when I found the elegant solution to the Knight's infinite odyssey problem. I started to think about its generalization. Now, there are lots of paths that we can take. For example, we can play with the shape of our board, or maybe we could add some obstacles to our board, or in other words, squares that our knight can't step on during his movement. I chose to go with a third option, which is to play with knight's moveset. One can notice that traditionally, knight in chess is strictly defined by numbers 1 and 2, because it can do one of these 8 moves. But what if we defined a generalized a, B knight that can do one of these eight moves, which are strictly defined by numbers A and B, and then ask for which values of A and B can A, B knight reach every square on an infinite board. That's exactly what I did and, as it turns out, the solution is truly marvelous. Let's get into it. So, first of all, let's create some strategy for this problem. In the elegant solution, we've showed that the traditional knight could reach the 1-0 square, and this was sufficient for showing that he can visit every square. In fact, these two statements are equivalent, because if knight can reach every square, then, in particular, it must reach the 1-0 one. The same could be said about the AB knight, so our focus will be to show for which values of A and B can AB knight visit 1, 0 square. Now let's explore for a bit by choosing certain values of A and B. For AB equals to 1, we are already done, because 2, 1 knight is the traditional one. We can choose something similar, for example AB equals 1, 1. This case is very interesting, because 1-1 one, one knight can only move diagonally, and hence it will never reach 1-0 square. Therefore, it won't visit every square. Let's stop here and think for a bit why 1-1 one, one knight doesn't work. As you can see, our board is colored with two colors, blue and white. So let's assume that the 0-0 zero, zero square is white. If AB knight can't reach squares of both colors, then he is out of the game, and this is the case for AB knights for which A plus B is even. To see that, let's define parity of a square by the parity of the sum of its coordinates. We can notice that all white squares are even, and blue squares are odd. And when A plus B is even, the move of AB knight doesn't change the parity of a square that is under the knight. Since he starts at a white 0, 0 square, it will never reach any blue one. Okay, we have the first condition for pair AB. The sum of A and B must be odd. So let's consider another example that follows this rule, D6-3 knight. It indeed can reach both colors, but it can't reach D10 square. Why? Let's look at the greatest common divisor of A and B. Since in the case of 6 free knight it is equal to 3, 
then coordinates of every square that the knight can reach are also multiples of 3. 1 is definitely not a multiple of 3, so 6 free knight can't reach the 1 0 square. In general, if greatest common divisor of a and b is greater than 1, then for the analogous reason it also can't reach 1 0 square. We now have two conditions for a and b. a plus b must be odd and greatest common divisor of a and b must be equal to 1. And as it turns out, these are the necessary and sufficient conditions for a b knight to be able to reach every square on the infinite board. Finally. But before I'll say goodbye to you, we need to prove it. The core of the proof I'm going to present to you is this very basic and fundamental theorem of number theory, which is Bezout's identity. It states that if we have two integers, a and b, then there exists two other integers, n and m, such that na plus mb is equal to greatest common divisor of a and b. If you don't know it, please check out Black Pen Red Pen's video about it and go further into the proof. Okay, so we assume that we have a pair of integers, a, b, such that a plus b is odd and greatest common divisor of a and b is equal to 1. And we want to show that a b knight can reach the 1 0 square. Since greatest common divisor of a and b is equal to 1, then by Bezout's identity there exist two other integers n m such that n a plus m b is equal to 1. Now let our a b knight do a b move n times and also a minus b move n times then b a move m times and also b minus a move m times. Adding these moves together we acquire a 2 n a plus 2 m b 0 move, which by the definition of n and m is just a 2 0 move. We are almost there, we just need to use the Bezout's identity once again. Since a plus b is odd, we have that greatest common divisor of a plus b and 2 is equal to 1. So there exist integers k and l such that k times a plus b plus 2l is equal to 1. Now we let our a b knight do a b and b minus a moves k times and also do the 2 0 move l times. By adding these moves together, we acquire a k times a plus b plus 2l, 0 move, which by the definition of k and l is just a 1 0 move. We are done! If you've watched the whole thing, I want to say thank you, because I put my heart and soul into this video. I think the whole general process of solving a problem that starts with exploring, finding similarities between our problem and something we've seen in the past, then using these similarities in the solution itself, and then improving upon our own results, is beautiful, because it shows how logical and fascinating math world is. In the end, I would like to point out one nice lesson that comes with this video. Finding the solution is not the end of solving a math problem. See you next time.